In this video, we will be discussing the general safety guidelines and basic operation for the double bevel sliding compound miter saw. Towards the front of our tool, we have the blade guard. You will want to make sure to keep the blade guard in place and make sure that it is in proper working order. If any adjustments have been made, you will want to remove any adjusting keys and wrenches. Your work area should be kept clean. You never want to force the tool. And you do want to make sure that you are using the right tool for the job. This is a cross cutting and miter cutting tool. You want to make sure that you're wearing the right apparel. I have no loose fitting clothing. I am not wearing any dangly jewelry. I do not have any gloves, neckties, or bracelets either. It is also recommended that you wear non-slip shoes. And of course, you need to have an approved pair of safety glasses that are ANSI Z87 approved. Always make sure that you secure the workpiece prior to cutting. And if your hand is within six inches of the blade, that is not a safe cut and we need to find an alternate method to safely cut that piece of lumber. Prior to any adjustments needing to be made, make sure that you unplug the tool. And if any maintenance is being done, we need to lock out our plug. Prior to plugging in the saw, I like to squeeze and release the trigger just to make sure that it is in the off position and it has not been permanently locked in the on position or that trigger switch is not stuck in the on position. This will prevent accidental startups. When you approach a machine, you always want to do a visual inspection. This will help you determine if the tool is safe to operate prior to turning it on. If anything does not look quite right, we will need to address that prior to using the tool. Stay alert, watch what you are doing, and use common sense. Do not use the machine when you are tired or under the influence of drugs, prescription, or otherwise, or alcohol. A moment of inattention while operating the tool may result in injury. Obtain advice from your instructor or another qualified person if you are not thoroughly familiar with the operation of this machine. Knowledge is safety. Prior to operating the miter saw, make sure that it is mounted and secure. It is always good to double check the rotation of the blade. We can check this by identifying the directional arrows on the blade in relation to the directional arrow on the saw. This blade is installed in the correct orientation. If you are using a clamp for a stop block or another approved clamp to secure your workpiece, make sure that you tighten all of the clamp handles prior to operation. When operating the miter saw, you should never need to force a cutting action. The tool should easily cut through the lumber with little pressure. Allow the motor to come to a full speed prior to starting your cut. Starting the cut too soon may cause damage to the machine or blade and or injury to yourself. Never cut any type of ferrous metal as the carbide tips on the blades can fly off at high speeds causing serious injury. Never have any part of your body in line with the path of the saw blade. Personal injury will occur. If the saw is connected to a power source, do not ever place either hand in the blade area 
as inadvertent blade activation could result in serious injury. Never attempt a free-handed cut as the workpiece will be thrown at high speeds causing serious injury. Always have the workpiece secured tightly against the fence and the table. Additionally, never reach underneath the saw unless it is unplugged and locked out. Reaching around the back side of the saw blade will also cause injury. The miter saw is only designed to be used with cross-cut saw blades of the correct size and type. The kerf plate will accept the blade as you perform your cut. You want to make sure that the kerf plate is in good condition. The margin of safety for the miter saw is six inches. This means if your hands are within six inches of the blade, it is a dangerous operation. You will get injured and we need to find a better method for performing that type of operation. Never lock the switch in the on position. After completing a cut, leave the saw head in the down position until the blade comes to a complete stop. Then you can raise the saw head and clear the scrap lumber with a push stick, the rest of your board that was cut, or some other type of means other than your hand. Long pieces of lumber should be supported by a helper. Never cross arms to operate the saw. This is considered a left-handed cut. A better method would be to have the largest portion of our lumber to the left of the blade, which will allow us a much safer operation. And prior to making any cuts, the workpiece must be secured down to the table and against the fence prior to the machine starting. This tool is equipped with an automatic electric brake which stops the saw blade within five seconds of trigger release. Make sure that the saw head is in the downward position until the blade has come to a complete stop. Only then are you able to safely raise the saw head. Additionally, as you perform a cut, the guard will automatically be raised just enough as you feed your saw into the workpiece. Now, although this saw is equipped with a saw blade guard, the guard is made out of very thin plastic and is somewhat flimsy. So if you fall into this blade guard or come in contact with the blade guard, there is a chance that blade guard will come in contact with the blade, which could cause severe injury. Do not assume that this thin piece of plastic will protect you. The blade guard will automatically expose the amount of blade needed for a cut. Never should you manually raise the blade guard. To lay out a board for cutting on the miter saw, we first need to measure our board to our specified length and using a sharp pencil, put a small mark at the measurement that we want our board. We will then place an X on the far side of the line, which is the far side of our measurement, and this will help remind us to line up our blade with the X side of the line. Next, we can slide our board into position and slowly bring down our blade until one of the teeth touches our pencil line. You may need to adjust your board left and right as you bring down that saw blade. We want our saw blade on the X side of the line because the thickness of the saw blade is an eighth of an inch, so we're going to lose an eighth of an inch of material. After our board has been lined up, I'm going to secure my workpiece 
I am placing pressure against the fence and I am placing pressure down against the table. I'm going to pull the saw head all the way out. I'm going to start it in the air, lower the head of the saw all the way down through the kerf plate and slowly push it back all the way in towards the wall. When the saw head is pushed in as far as it can go, I'm going to release the trigger, wait until the blade comes to a complete stop, and then raise the saw head. If you're going to be performing a cut where the slide feature is not needed, we're first going to push the saw head all the way back. We're going to locate the rail lock knob and tightening that down will lock the rails and disable the slide function. With this set, the saw will only go up and down. It will not pull out. There are some parts of the miter saw that you need to know. First, we have the blade guard, which is located in front of the saw and is covering the blade. Next, we have the trigger switch. This is what turns the saw on and off. After that, we have the glides, which are also referred to as the slides. We have our fence, which our board is held up against and we have our table, which the board is held down against. And lastly, we have our table lock, which will lock our table at any given angle. To create a miter cut, we first need to unlock the table. Next, we need to depress our miter latch button. After that, we can use our miter scale to set our saw to a specified angle and then reset that miter table lock. Once our angle has been set, the cutting operation follows the same procedures as a traditional cross cut. Kickback on the miter saw occurs when the board pinches the blade and either the board is going to give or the saw head is going to give. And given that we are using a sliding miter saw, typically the miter saw head is going to give, which means the head of the saw will violently come out at you as that kerf closes and pinches on the blade. It can more easily occur with wider pieces of lumber, but it can still easily occur with smaller pieces of lumber. Preventing kickback can be as easy as looking at the fence. Right now our board is tight up against the fence and there is no gap between our board and the fence. If this board were to have a bit of a gap between the board and the fence, you can guarantee that some form of kickback will occur as you are performing this cutting operation. To illustrate this in an exaggerated manner, I have a very crooked board. You will notice that there is a large gap between the edge of the lumber and the fence on the miter saw. If I were to perform this type of cut with the board in this orientation, 100% of the time it will kick back on me. The solution to this is to flip the board around so we are now tight up against the fence right where the blade will be cutting. And as long as we're maintaining that downward pressure, the pressure against the fence, and we have no gap between the board and the fence, it will not kick back on us. And obviously, because this board is so crooked, 
we will not have a perfectly perpendicular cut, but if you grab a board that's this crooked, you probably shouldn't be cutting on it anyways. To demonstrate what happens during a kickback, I will be cutting on this very wide board. You will notice that there is a gap between the edge of the board and the fence. This is that first thing that you need to look for. Additionally, I will be making this cut much faster than you should make a cut. So I'm going to force this piece of lumber to kick back on me. As I was cutting this board, my saw blade was creating a kerf. That is the material that is removed by the thickness of the blade. Because I was pushing the saw blade in, I was creating a tremendous amount of pressure and the board was wanting to push against the fence. Because there is a gap between the fence and the board, the board begins to give along the kerf. And the kerf will close, pinching on the blade. And once again, either the saw head is going to give, the lumber is going to give, or in this particular case, both of them gave a little bit. It was important that I maintained a firm grip on the board and a firm grip on the saw, making sure to keep my hands away from the cutting area. The solution to cutting a board in a case like this is to turn the board around and check and see if we have eliminated that gap between the lumber and the fence.